Welcome back everybody. Now that we have actually discussed our basic multicast, we have laid down some of the foundations of multicast, we have talked about the multicast routing table, etc, etc, and so on. Now it is time to actually go into the demos. So the very first thing we intend to demonstrate here are IGMP version 1, version 2, and version 3. But even before I do that, I actually need to lay down some of the groundwork for those demos. And uh, in essence, we are actually going to start with the topology that would be used for those demos. Now, this topology that is in front of you, this would be used for the vast majority of the demos. I would say about 90%. There may be one or two things here or there, inter-AS multicast comes to mind, which this topology itself is inadequate for. But for most other things, we will be using this topology. It's a topology that consists of seven routing devices. And these on a given day could be, an, could be iOS routers, could be Junos routers. So we intend to actually do the demos both on iOS as well as Junos as much as possible. The first demos will always be with iOS and then we would do a follow-up video with the Junos demos. So R1, R2, R3, don't go by the icon. Those are Cisco icons right now, but these could be Junos routers as well. It will depend on the particular uh, lesson that we are actually covering at that point. Now in this topology, the very first thing that I'd like to demonstrate here is the major network that we are using. So the major network being used in this topology is 172.26. So any of the IP addresses that you see on any of the links, any of the loopbacks, etc., they should always have two octets in them. And then you would just put them behind 172.26 to come up with a complete IP. For example, this particular interface here is 172.26.12.0 slash 24 being the IP addressing of that link. And then dot one goes to R1 and dot two goes to R2. We've tried to keep it simple like that. When it comes to the interfaces, these are all single legged routers, whether it comes to, uh, comes, whether it is Junos or whether it's iOS, it doesn't make a difference. What we are using here are sub interfaces with dot one Q encapsulation. You should be pretty familiar with that, but that's what we are using here. The protocol running here is very basic OSPF and it is only running in area zero. There are no other fancy areas or anything like that. It's all area zero. There is loopback to loopback connectivity for every router and also source to destination or source to receiver connectivity at Unicast. There is no multicast in this network right now other than whatever little OSPF uses for its control. The next thing to notice here are the sources and the receivers. There is a single source in this network that sits up here. And for all intents and purposes for both iOS and Junos lectures, this is actually ju is just going to be an iOS device. Now we, we picked iOS uh, because it's a little bit easier to show all of the debugs and augment those with packet captures. But really, this is an iOS device without any IP routing configured on it. So the very first command that we issued on it is no IP routing. There is no IP routing protocol. It just has a simple default gateway. And that happens to be R1. And that is all it does. It is going to send some multicast packets and maybe later on it'll be a source and a receiver when it comes to bi-directional multicast, but that is way, way, way beyond. For right now, it's just a simple source that is capable of sending both unicast and multicast packets. Now pay attention to the lower right-hand corner. This is where we have our receivers. So this subnet is the receiver subnet. And there are two receivers here. Uh, we call them REC100 and REC200 for obvious reasons. It's all in 172.26.56 subnet. And they are once again iOS devices. And they once again have no IP routing configured on them. No IP multicast routing, no IP unicast routing, no routing of any kind. They just act as end hosts. There is a default gateway on here, 
and that default gateway is dot one on the same subnet so 56.1 that is actually an hsrp relationship that runs between these two routers and when it comes to junos it will probably be vrrp but if it is not vrrp we are probably just going to use either five or six as default gateways this part is not really important because it has nothing to do with the routing of the multicast packets all it does is route unicast packets so you will see later why that is actually needed for our verifications but just realize that it has a default gateway to launch unicast packets into the network apart from that there is really not much else going on here what we'd like to show you right now is just a simple demo that shows that there is end-to-end -end connectivity in this network so we will go to the source itself and we will ping 56.100 so we will ping 56.100 and 56.200 from that source and we will also trace to those so we'll do a trace route to both of those IPs just to see if there is end-to-end -end connectivity and if we need to fix anything we'll fix it now so we'll say ping 172.26.56.100 and there we go we can actually ping that device also 200 we can also ping that device the next thing is to actually see the path that the unicast packets follow here so we'll say trace 172.26.56.100 and that trace comes back and we'll also do the same trace for 200 it should be identical now one thing I forgot to mention here this R7 router is actually not going to be in the topology for a majority of the demos it's it's not going to be included in the topology for a majority of the demos so that's why the path that you actually see here on the trace route uh, let's take a closer look at it so 172.26.1.1 that's this link here so this is the very first hop then it is 172.26.12.2 so it is the hop between r1 and r2 so that's the second hop then it goes to 23.3 so this is the third hop here 34.4 so the fourth hop is right over here the fifth hop is 46.6 so that's really just an equal cost multipathing load balancing thing so it's really going to depend on the hash but it's five right here and then finally it goes right on to the subnet which is the sixth hop uh, let's see if it is any different for either one of these and it doesn't look like it is so both of the devices uh, are reachable via the same path for right now and and that actually is probably not going to change so it really just depends on the ceph but here are all of the all of the hops right there and other than that we will see you one more time in the um, igmp demos thank you very much and i i hope you've enjoyed this video